Good day, good people, and welcome to Real Chicks Rock presents Real Discussions. I am your host, Michelle Dosbert, and as always, I'm super excited to be here. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood here in Atlanta. A little crisp, a little crisp. It was a little warm yesterday, 65 degrees. We dropped about 20 degrees, so we're back in the coats and the boots and the scarves and what have you, but it's dry. So that means no precipitation, no rain, no black ice, no snow. We're all, it's all good. We're going to be all right. A lot of things going on here in the A. A um, lot of uh, controversy around what's going on. Uh, trials are happening. People are talking, buzzing about Usher. Tickets are on sale. Um, people are getting their tickets as he's coming back to Atlanta. Great representation that he did last week at the Super Bowl. Super excited to see that performance. Everything was just right on point, and he did the A. You know, he did a, he did a solid. Did a, did did a good job, and we're so proud of him. And so everybody's gonna be scrambling to get those tickets when he comes to town this year, and it's well deserved for everything that he's done. But enough about that. Enough about that. We're going we gonna to talk to somebody that knows about music in his own right and doing some really great things in just a second. But I just want to welcome all the new listeners. Thank you so much for leaning in and checking us out. Let me give you a little background about what Real Chicks Rock is all about. It's all about creatively collaborating and connecting to raise awareness regarding issues that impact women. And we do it by way of community service engagement, public speaking, mentoring, and the arts. And we've been doing this particular platform platform since April of 2016. Yeah, I wear that proudly. Yeah, I've been doing this for a little bit here and it's exciting. It's fun. It never gets old. And we continue to bring people on here that's got something to say and has had an impact right in the things that they've done, that they're doing. They're passionate. And so we give them this platform to just talk to us for a little bit today. And so today is no different. I'm going to have a conversation with my friend, Will Griggs. Hello, Will. How you doing? I'm great. I'm great. How are you doing today? I'm Thanks good. For good, good, good to have you. So Will, let, tell, tell the people, where are you from? Where are you from? Well, actually, I grew up in Oklahoma City Ooh. and I uh, actually stayed there until I got to be about 17, 18 and then moved to Atlanta where I lived for just under 20 years. Really? Oklahoma City as a kid. A lot of um, black people living out there in Oklahoma City. What's going on out there? What was what was the landscape for you as a kid? Well, surprisingly, it is a lot of black people that live in Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. You know, Oklahoma, as people might not know, mm -hmm. was actually started to be uh, America's only and first black state. Uh, and that was a promise that was made to black people. But during the land run of 1889, mm -hmm. of course, those promises were downtrodden yeah. by them letting all the settlers of, of all races come in and, yeah. and take whatever land they wanted and, yeah. you know, a little bit of history. But uh, before that, from a historical standpoint, Oklahoma was a state that had a lot of Indian land and Indian mm -hmm. reservations. Mm -hmm. And if slaves escaped from Texas or Arkansas or any of the surrounding states and got there, they couldn't go back. Wow. So even to this day, all throughout Oklahoma, there's lots of towns of blacks and Indians. And mm -hmm. believe it or not, Oklahoma has more black towns than just about any state. Wow. Did not know that. So based on that, uh, Will, what was the music you listened to as a kid growing up in Oklahoma City? Well, you know, we had the Gap Band, you know, uh, from a local standpoint. Yeah. Though, really, you know, probably the most popular band mm -hmm. from R&B and uh, hip hop standpoint. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I grew up is pretty much when hip hop started. I think I was about 12 when right. some of the hip -hop stuff came down the pipe with Sugar Hill Gang mm -hmm. and Eighth Wonder and all that mm -hmm. stuff. But, you know, we really love Zap and all of the West Coast music. You right. know, Oklahoma is kind of right in the middle of the country. So we got all the stuff from the South and the West mm -hmm. and uh, New York hip hop as well. So mm -hmm. it was a really great mixing pot for music for us. Mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. um, did you feel like you guys might have leaned more to the Bay Area, like getting a little bit of that from people from Oakland at that time? <laughs> you, know, you know, the thing of it is... Um, being in the center of the country like that, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it's almost an equal mix of everything. You know, people like, you know, have gotten a chance to like a lot of go-go music, right. uh, a lot of the hip-hop music of the of the early 80s, uh, you know, a good bit of the West Coast hip-hop stuff with Egyptian Lover and all of that type mm. of stuff. And uh, Zap and Roger and all that West Coast stuff. But, you know, there were some Dallas artists and Texas artists and yeah. Oklahoma artists that people were listening to and a lot of people from the Midwest, too. Awesome. Awesome. So 17 years there in Oklahoma City, then you come to Atlanta. What brought you to Atlanta, Will? 
actually came to Atlanta for college. Okay. Where'd you go? So I started over at Clark, and uh, that was a really good experience for me to get a chance to get a, a feel of how journalism works, you know, as Clark mm. is a journalism school. Mm-hmm. And the beauty of that, of course, is, you know, which I didn't quite understand the value of having all of those schools all in one area. Right. Between Clark, Morehouse, Spelman, mm. and Morris Brown. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a beautiful experience in addition to having Georgia State and uh, – Georgia Tech yes. and Oklahoma and Agnes got mm-hmm. all around too. Mm-hmm. So it was a great college experience for me. Ended up transferring to Georgia State and uh, and that's why I finished. Okay, okay. So during those years, your college years, how was that for you? Were you touching the music a little bit or really just focusing on communications at that time? Well, at the time I was really focusing on communications and getting a sense of Atlanta. Mm. Um, you know, it was just such a vast set of growth experiences that Atlanta had undergone during the 80s and uh, 90s. So it was just a brilliant thing to kind of witness on our fronts, especially from a social musical standpoint. Uh, During the time, Atlanta has so many free concerts that would take place Mm -hmm. at Grand Park and Piedmont Mm -hmm. Park. You know, huge things. We would go see Parliament Funkadelic Mm -hmm. and SOS Band and all these bands. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I'm not sure if they have as many free concerts now down there, but, Mm -hmm. you know, that whole thing was just being immersed in all that black culture was outstanding. That was wonderful. Yeah, yeah. We, you know, we still do have the Jazz Festival that's May. And then the Dogwood Festival, that should be coming up in the next month or two. And you're right, it is a platform for great free concerts. I've seen, you know, Roberta Flack at the Dogwood Festival. Like, I mean, how many people could say that? And that's a free concert. And and the numerous people that have come through um, the Jazz Festival, you know, from Robert Glassberg to, um, you know, last year was Let It See. It was, it was, it's phenomenal. So yeah, the talent that comes through here is incredible. So, you know, during that time for you, Will, what, what did you see? What were you picking up? You know, you're, uh, you're focusing on communications, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Atlanta's becoming this place where, it's not just a Martin Luther King thing. It's it's a place where black people are seeing this as a as a mecca, almost like a utopia and and didn't really know what to do with it yet, but felt like something was bubbling. Was that the kind of energy you were feeling, Will, at the time? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, certainly with uh, this is the middle of the Freaknik years. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> that, those years, uh, those years. Everybody was uh, converging on the city of Atlanta. <laughs> yeah. Not only for Freaknik, you know, and some of them maybe came for Freaknik, but people were also converging on the city of Atlanta for a, a place to live. Right. Where they experienced that culture and that warmness and that blackness right. all in one place. Right. Uh, that that is that very rare experience that Atlanta still is to this day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a lot of things going on, a lot of opportunities, I would say, you know, during that time, right? What was then Fulton County Stadium turned into Turner Field because the mm-hmm. Olympics, the Olympics was big, uh, mm-hmm. you know, right after freak the Freak Nick years. <laughs> um, um, you know, and I'm in no, I'm in none of the videos. I'm in none of the videos, but I was out there. I seen it. I knew it. You know, Rio Mall. There was so many different pockets and places but I want to talk to you about it because things have changed so give us a little bit about how it was then how did we come up with how did you birth this thing called chocolate soul how did that come about for you well you know being kind of immersed into that whole social culture Uh also helped me be immersed in a, a, a music culture yes. and a very, very inclusive music culture. When you look at the city of Atlanta, Atlanta brings influences from New York, from Miami with the bass sound, a little bit even from the West Coast mm-hmm. and certainly from D.C. with Go-Go and the soul of Philadelphia all kind of mixed into one. Plus, you know, Atlanta has its own mix of Southern soul, Southern hip hop and all kinds of other Southern music forms. So, so you know, just experiencing all of that together as a young person who was already, you know, inclined into journalism and music. Mm -hmm. It was a great time to not only be there and be in school, but a great time to be a journalist. Mm -hmm. Uh, The whole Chocolate Soul thing was actually birthed from, uh, well, it was actually birthed from a college project from a college radio show. Okay. uh, Right there at Georgia State Mm -hmm. with our famed and beloved 88.5. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. (laughs) Really, really great days. 
where we got a chance to do a show called The Urban Flavor. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were blessed to have that be kind of a birthplace and a launching pad for a lot of those energies and a lot of things that people uh, really enjoyed during the 90s and 2000s. Mm -hmm. how, how long did this show run for you on the air, Urban Flavor? Well, you know, it's a college radio show, so naturally after I graduated and left, it kept going. Mm -hmm. I think it, it started in like 92 mm -hmm. and ended in 2000 and... Wow. 2013. Wow. Long run. That's a long run. Yeah, and it's a beautiful thing because, you know, a lot of other uh, young radio announcers got a chance to get on the show and yeah. launch their careers from there. And a lot of other people who are just going into the industry mm -hmm. in and of itself got a chance to launch their careers from there, not only from the show Urban Flavor, but also, you know, the parent shows that Birth did, which was uh, The Bomb, which was a hip hop show yeah. and also Rhythm and Vibes. Right, right. Tell me the concept of Urban Flavor. What was it that you were trying to accomplish with that show? Was it just having conversations with different artists? Just tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. Yeah. The whole urban flavor thing was to fulfill a niche that was missing from a radio standpoint uh, over and above what WCLK was doing to have a mixture of soul music, mm -hmm. hip hop, acid jazz, mm -hmm. and a little bit of reggae all mixed into one uh, and kind of a seamless uh, and some house too. Yeah. All mixed into one and kind of a seamless mix. And, uh, and you know, that for the city of Atlanta worked really, really well. Yeah. 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 What time did it air? 6 to 8 p.m. on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a good time. That's a good time. So a lot of different people. So you got a chance through Urban Flavor, Will, to talk to different artists as they were up and coming. You know, a lot of pictures um, back in the day with you, with India Ari, you know, those type of people. They came through the station, gave you the interview, maybe dropped new music. So you were pretty hot at that time, no? Well, believe it or not, uh, India Ari hadn't even started yet. Wow. <laughs> so, but here's the thing, you know, it was a really beautiful time uh, because we had not only our station, uh, we also had WREK. Mm-hmm. And also had a really, really successful and, and great hip hop show. We had yeah. uh, WRFG, mm -hmm. uh, you know, not too far from there, which yeah. also had a great run of shows and still does. Uh, WCLK was also bringing all of that flavor into the mix. So all of those energies were really, really growing in the city of Atlanta and just growing a uh, whole rich music bed. Keep in mind, at the same time, the face had just started. Mm. And, uh, and Dallas Austin had really gotten you know, kind of his footing going really, really well. Mm -hmm. And uh, along with the Dungeon family and everyone mm -hmm. kind of really starting to push Atlanta's music face forward. Yeah. In that regard, you know, we got to be the first to debut a lot of those artists. You know, we were the first to play Outkast on the radio. Nice. Uh, when it came out with uh, Southern Playlistic. Yeah. Uh, we were the first to play Escape, yeah. first to play Joy, the first to play D'Angelo. And uh, a lot of those... Uh, of course, you know, he definitely wasn't from Atlanta, but, you know, his growth came out of that whole Southern Soul yeah. scenario, just like all the rest of those artists. Yeah. So that was a lot of a lot of fun. And that kind of, you know, that little two hour show birthed not only a good bit of uh, awareness about a lot of those types of shows and events that were taking place in Atlanta, but also birthed, uh, you know, some pretty hugely popular events one of which you know was mine that we both which you mentioned chocolate soul mm -hmm. and even funk jazz cafe mm -hmm. uh, uh with my buddy jason or mm -hmm. actually you know we both right around that same time and pretty much from what we were doing there as well yeah shouts out to jason or like that guy um so chocolate soul came out of it and so what was your intent for chocolate soul what did you really want the people to walk away with by you doing this type of show well yeah, believe it or not uh, Chocolate Soul actually started out um, at the time I was an intern for Warner Brothers Records. Mm. And uh, we had an artist named Casserine, and we were looking for a CD release party for her. Uh, uh, shout out to Jason Orr once again. Mm -hmm. he, he told me about this place called the Yin Yang Cafe. Yeah. So went and checked it out. Seemed like a good little spot, and the mm -hmm. energy was really, really nice in there, and the food was really, really good. You know, <laughs> folks at Warner Brothers thought it would be great. Yeah. Uh, Shout out to Brenda Smith, my uh, right, the regional at Warner Brothers who brought me in. So we had this show one Thursday there, 
and it was really, really successful. Mm. Uh, Jason had a really great idea of having Little John and the Chronicle be the house band for mm. the evening. Mm-hmm. It was so successful. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we also wanted to have something to promote urban flavor with. Because it was so successful, they asked that we come back and do it every week. And uh, nice. and that's where we came up, or, you know, where I came up with the name Chocolate Soul, yeah. Thursdays. And that started the whole Thursday night thing over at the Guinean Cafe. Nice. Beautiful. And how was that vibe, Will? How was it? I mean, the first night was a success. How was it week after week for you guys? Week after week was out of control. You know, Little John was <laughs> So one of the things that we were able to do, you know, in having the whole community like that work together, like with all those radio stations and, and uh, everybody who was affiliated in the music industry kind of working together but you know being an intern over at Warner Brothers we were able to have a lot of the record label artists come through in addition to nice. a lot of the local uh, really great soul artists and have them get up there with Little John and the Chronicle nice. and that was fierce nice really. so we had a super super packed house yeah and then the line was out the door yeah I was out the door. Oh, yeah, and, down the block. And then I was <laughs> down the block and yeah. around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because, you know, Lil John, shouts out to Lil John Roberts. He's a beast anyway, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's just a beast. I had an opportunity to talk to him, and he's a really talented musician. And just in the space nowadays, you know, just giving back and teaching at Berkeley. Um, but just tearing it up and the energy anytime he gets behind those drums it's a whole nother dimension that you're gonna you go Lil so John on the drums and yeah about Lil John and the rest of those Philly drummers you know yeah it's like more beats per bar when they play <laughs> so it's got a little bit more bounce, you know what I mean I know you had uh L-Rock on the uh on the move yeah and- uh, you know, he ended up being, uh, you know, a super accomplished producer, and he did so much stuff for So So Deaf and everybody. Uh, you had uh, Billy Odom on guitar, yeah. who also did a whole lot of uh, great production for So So Deaf and right. Dungeon Family moving forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had uh, Avery Johnson on bass, who also helped produce one of NDRE's uh, songs mm-hmm. and albums. Uh, and so it was really an all-star cast, and even mixed with that whole All Star cast, oh yeah, plus Phil on the on the keys. Yes, well. yes, Phil, Phil Davis. Davis. Mm-hmm. You forget Phil Davis. Yes, Phil me. Davis, awesome. Yeah. Then when you add that All Star cast and you add DJ Kimmer to it, yep, it was it was, it was tearing them down. Yeah, it was, it was ridiculous. <laughs> like you joined in the in the thirties, you know, I mean, it was it was crazy and it was hot and it was sweaty. Yeah. And everybody on uh, one accord. Yeah. And everybody Thinking back, and it was like, and you know, from that there was a certain like connection and a certain energy exchange yeah. between the artists and the crowd that mm-hmm. always stayed with Chocolate Soul, mm-hmm. even as we outgrew that and started, you know, having those performances in bigger venues. Yeah, yeah, amazing stuff. Will, did you feel at any point because of your relationship with Warner um, and having these artists, maybe there could be some you know, record deals that could possibly happen. Was that ever a thought for you at that time? Well, you know, at the time, because it got so popular, not only did Warner Brothers start bringing their artists, but, you know, Def Jam and some other labels Mm -hmm. started bringing their artists Mm -hmm. as well. And, you know, at the time, I really did hope and want that to be uh, some type of record situation that we were going to develop for the Chronicle and have like a southern version of the Roots where we would have yeah. the Chronicle and all of their guests on one record. Yeah. Uh, you know, we weren't able to quite pull that off at the time. We were able to include the Chronicle on the Chocolate Soul compilation. At nice. Least. So, you know, it worked out all in all. Nice, nice. All in all, it worked out. So Chocolate Soul was around for how long, Will? How long were you guys providing these events and making the people feel a certain way? Well, uh, Chocolate Soul started in 1994, and, um, you know, in addition to being somewhere where people could see a whole lot of really good music shows, we also morphed that into a record label, Mm -hmm. and I had uh, not only a single artist record by an artist named Nwambe, and uh, and three compilations come out with artists from all over the world. And that run stopped right around 2010, 2011. Mm, nice run. That was a nice run. 
Absolutely. That was a nice run. Uh, times have changed, though, right? Then you started to change a little bit. I, I did hear you mention that you guys kind of went to a bigger venue, kind of maybe outgrew a little bit from a space perspective with Yin Yang Cafe. So where, where did you guys end up going? Well, from the Yin Yang, you know, we kind of had a difference of uh, artistic difference on the way that that evening should go. Okay. And crowds alone made it prohibitive for us to stay there much longer. So uh, as we grew and progressed, the venues got bigger and bigger. So we went from there and we started using a, a venue that used to be in Little Five Points called The Point. Mm -hmm. And that was a wonderful spot for us mm -hmm. to uh, actually move from there and grow. From there, we went to another venue that used to be on Peachtree Street called The Cotton Club. Yeah. I remember that one. It was mm -hmm. also a really, really outstanding venue. Mm -hmm. From there, we went to Variety Playhouse. Nice, I remember that. Uh, and after that, you know, it was time for the tour. So mm. then we actually did two tours, and then we came back and did a tour to support the uh, the albums. Mm -hmm. What cities did you hit on the tour, Will? You remember? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we actually hit, uh, well, we started in Atlanta. You mm. know, that's hometown. We got to gotta do it there first. Uh, we also did it at uh, in Washington, D.C., and we also did a version of that for the uh, NABJ conference way back in 1998, mm -hmm. which was great because that particular conference was a unity conference, mm -hmm. which brings together not only the black journalists, but also uh, the journalists of Asian descent, uh, Native mm -hmm. Americans and Latin Americans mm -hmm. all in one big mixture. And that was an outstanding uh, place for us to exhibit, you know, what we had going with the tour. Mm -hmm. The tour is sponsored by BET. Um, nice. Uh, BET.com in order to launch the website as well. Nice. You didn't know how long ago that was. Nice. <laughs> nice. It's still nice but stuff, yeah, though. We also did uh, uh, New York City, Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Did Washington, D.C. twice. Uh, Los Angeles. Uh, we also did one uh, for the uh, album release in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And uh, Houston. And I think that's everywhere. I think yeah, so, yeah, it's a lot of big, you hit all the major markets and cities, that's that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, and that was a really, really good chance for us to, you know, not only spread our kind of southern chocolate soul energy and the way we do things in Atlanta and done things through chocolate soul, mm -hmm. it was for us to connect with a whole lot of artists from, you know, around the country and have them end up on our compilation. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a chance during that time to be featuring, you know, the first recorded piece of music uh, by Kindred, the Family Soul. Nice. So that was great. And we loved working with them. And they always tore the house down. Mm -hmm. And still doing it. <laughs> still doing it. Yeah. And still tearing it down. Still tearing it down. Will, did you still have a, an association with the communication side of you as well as doing Chocolate Soul? Was that a marriage in itself? Or did you have to kind of pivot and just focus on Chocolate Soul and not really p give a, uh, too much attention to the communications side in you? Well, they kind of started when I was doing them both at the same time for mm -hmm. quite a long time. So naturally that whole core communications element kind of stayed in there. and. Uh, and it also helped us to have good promotions and PR for the tour and for the shows. Um, and, you know, to actually get a feel for what people want and the type of artists that people want to see. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Good stuff. So what happened next for you guys? So Chocolate Soul is doing its thing. Then it gets to a point. Mm -hmm. What was next for you after Chocolate Soul? Well, the next thing for us was to really see the Chocolate Soul label launch. And we got a chance to to have some really great artists on a lot of those compilations. Uh, you know, Kendrick, of course, was on there as mm -hmm. well, and mm -hmm. Anthony David mm -hmm. uh, from a local standpoint, and Raheem Devon, Lisa mm -hmm. from out in uh, Los Angeles. Um, you know, just a really good mixture of high-powered artists. Uh, the influence uh, from London. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Satoshi Tomi. Yeah. Uh, from uh, Japan. And, you know, it was a really great, and also the Chronicle was on uh, the compilation as well, the first compilation. So mm -hmm. it was a really great mixture of things and a really great mixture of artists that came together um, all at one time. We were able to bring them, you know, a lot of them to Atlanta to do our CD release party. And they actually named it uh, Chocolate Soul Day in Atlanta for mm -hmm. February 24th. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Do you see a change in music today? Well... I mean, from the time you did Chocolate Soul, um, you know, even having the radio show, Urban Flavor, well, is, it, is it still the same or is it different with music? Well, musically, things 
have not necessarily changed and they've actually grown. Mm. Uh, from a popular music standpoint, things have narrowed a good bit because, you know, most of the things that you hear on popular radio are pretty much centrally located with a certain set of themes. But when you look at music as a whole and when you look at the music creators as a whole, music has definitely grown mm. and the energy and creativity of it and beauty and it hasn't gone away. Mm. If anything, you know, it has grown because there's more tools and more people are able to make music now. Okay. But the thing of it is also because of that, there's a lot more clutter and a lot of songs that, you know, you may want to avoid. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but from a radio standpoint and a popular music standpoint, you know, it is, uh, you know, centrally themed and, you know, a bit monotonous. And, mm. you know, a lot of people are, you know, looking for alternative forms to consume music and mm -hmm. to have fun with music and have a musical experience. Mm -hmm. are, do you, are you bored with music? Do you find that you trying to find a fix or something? Are you finding what you're hearing? I appreciate you saying that music is is grown and not changed. Some of us older heads will be like, music has changed. It's not the same. So I appreciate you saying that it's it's growing or it's grown. So are you finding what you were used to or have you grown to in music or what is your what's going on with you musically and your, ear, from, from your music earbuds? <laughs> musical people is you just have to know where to find it now. Ah. If you go through traditional means and you hop in your car and you go to a local radio station, you know, that that that's certainly going to be limiting. Right. Even if you actually uh, decide to acquire a signal through XM radio or something like that, even yeah. that can be really limiting. Uh, something like YouTube or something like Pandora or Spotify, right? You know, gives people a chance to kind of get a wider range of listening experiences, and uh, you know, there are people like me who are also creating similar apps to also do that. Yeah. Um, you know, some, uh, one of which, of course, is a sister app of ours called Audilus, and that's a radio station similar to uh, Pandora. Mm. And, you know, we've launched the Reverie Channel now as well. Yeah, let, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the Reverie Channel. You're wearing it proudly. Nice hoodie. Mm -hmm. Nice pull up there. When was yeah, it? When yeah, when was it started? How long has it been in existence? And congratulations. Well, the Reverie Channel actually started uh, last May. So mm -hmm. we've been going a, a strong seven months. And, uh, you know, we're really happy with the growth of our channel. And yes. with the of music offerings and experiences we're able to offer. A really great mixture, you know, that people enjoy from all ages, you know, 25 to 70, you know what I mean? But it is a great mixture of concerts uh, where you can enjoy different levels of mm. concerts and different lengths of concerts right there from your own home or your phone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, videos, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of really great music videos, not only from known artists, but from a lot of really great independent artists mm -hmm. as well. Uh, performances that are like, really more intimate and from some of the artists own living rooms and, and things like that. Yeah. Um, in addition to a lot of great interview shows, like this is a great interview show, you Thank know, you. Um, <laughs> so a lot of great interview shows and backstage footage and, you know, different vignettes. So people can really, really, really get to know the artists and get to know where they're coming from musically and why they make the music they make, you know? Awesome. Awesome. What sparked this idea for you, this, this channel for you, Will, how did you, birth this why 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 did this happen well you know it was kind of birthed out of the absence of really good true soul music and dance floor soul music for me to experience in any regard especially mm. from concert regard uh and of course this was birthed during the uh at least the original idea started during the pandemic yes of course it took, uh, you know a couple of years two or three years to kind of get it all the way put together and mm -hmm, actually get mm -hmm. the concept going and then launch the channel but uh you know it was a chance for people of my kind of music taste mm -hmm. and people with more varying music taste to see something different you know um a lot of the options for experiencing music just offer you kind of one experience and kind of uh monotonous set of songs you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. and we want to offer people like yourself and like myself who like go-go who like house who like hip-hop who like alternative music and you know want to have a mix of all that together yeah. a chance to see those things and a chance to have a lot of visual experiences with that mm -hmm. instead of just the musical experience so it's 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 different than a bet soul or you know because it's 
it's not R and just R and B. It's a it's a collection of everything that black and brown people might be interested in, or just people that like music. Period. Right? It's not really yeah. specific for black or brown. It's just people that like music. Good music. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, and of course, there's people of our races and, and yes. you know, our colors who not only make the music that's on there, but and who seem to be enjoying the music on there. And that, that's very comforting, you know. But the important thing for us is that there's a certain musical excellence level that mm. distinguishes our channel from any other channel. That's mm. the most important thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One and thing. People enjoy listening to it. So, you know, it's something where you can start listening to it, you know, while you clean your house in the morning <laughs> and, you know, go all the way through to the afternoon and then maybe watch a the great set of documentaries as well. Yeah, I was I was just about to say the documentaries are great because I was checking out the channel and it was really, I was like, I got it. I got to go to work. I can't sit here. <laughs> I can't see there. I was getting pulled in and drawn in. Um, but it is good. But it is a channel, Will, that you just don't want to listen to. You kind of want to watch it, too. You know, you right. want to watch it because the concerts are good. Um, mm -hmm. The documentaries have been great. So it's it is a visual as well as an audio type of experience that you're That's providing. How, how did you come about the, the name? Why that name? How did you discover that name for yourself? You know, when you actually look to start something that's uh, an entertainment vehicle or something where you hope that people are going to connect with it from an entertainment standpoint, you just hope to be blessed with a good name. And as you think about it, you hope to connect with something that actually gives the feeling that you want to convey. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Urban Flavor or Chocolate Soul, you know, you want people to have that feeling of consuming chocolate, that feeling of warmness mm -hmm. in their soul as they consume the music. In this case, you know, as you're, you know, going through a hard day of work and you want to come home and take your mind off of that, or you want to come home and actually immerse yourself into some type of visual music experience, mm -hmm. that's where the name Reverie came from, you know, and it is a, uh, you know, I would just was so taken aback when I actually pulled it up and pulled up the definition and, you know, felt that it was so perfect, you know, technically, from a definition standpoint, uh, it's actually being lost in one's thoughts or being lost in a daydream. Mm, uh, mm. And also, you know, it has a double music meaning uh, on the music side. Mm -hmm. uh, and Reverie stands for kind of an instru instrumental piece or, you know, an instrumental nice. solo kind of piece. So uh, that's kind of where that name came yeah, from. Yeah, nice, nice. And then the logo uh, that's on your hoodie, uh, that's just, uh, this looks very fluid, looks like someone is dancing, um, you know, so it looks very, Melodic. It looks like a, a dream state uh, is what it's <laughs> it's kind of giving me. Is that what you were going for? Just kind of sultry? You know, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, kind of a dream state and kind of, you know, it's hard to see if that person is dancing or jumping for joy or right. exactly what they're expressing. But it is an expression of joy and reverie and, and a happy state of being. Mm -hmm, sure. mm -hmm. What do you want next for the channel? Where do you see it going for you, Will? Well, the, one of the things that we really want next for the channel is, you know, a good bit of adoption uh, for people all around the world and for them to adopt uh, one of the few, if not only, crowdfunding sources for artists and content creators that are out here. Mm -hmm. uh, as people watch the Reverie channel, you know, they can actually point their phones to the channel at certain points and connect with the QR code mm -hmm. and support their favorite artist or mm -hmm. support their favorite content creator mm -hmm. and uh, in, a, in a more, you know, con a concrete way mm -hmm. than giving a like or a love or a comment, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. and, you know, people, you know, as they get to the channel and as they adopt the channel, you know, they are donating and they really do support the artists and we really want to see that grow. That's the next thing we want to see grow. The next thing for us that's really important and we're hoping to implement this uh, by this next upcoming spring and summer is the live concerts and live events that will be taking place that people can, you know, actually consume right there with their phone or right there in their homes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so if you're in Cleveland and you want to see a really, really nice concert that's taking place at the time in Miami or Los Angeles, you can watch that right there on Reverie. Mm -hmm. the, the, there's so many things going on now, right? The, uh, the pandemic just changed our whole world, right? Because we weren't, we were, we were digital, we were streaming, but we weren't doing it until then. And um, 
it seems like there is a lot of opportunities or apps out here um, that are putting out what they want, you know, living their dreams out loud. Um, and it's just, it's just, it's, it's a lot that's going on. So I want to say for you, how are you guys keeping yourself cutting edge or is it a, sp a particular type of music that you're going to continue to hone in on for your channel? How do you feel about that? Well, you know, for us, you know, it's not necessarily about the style, you know, there are styles that are less represented like country and Western and, mm -hmm. and certainly a lot of hard rock and, and, uh, death music or metal, you know, we don't necessarily have much of that going. But at the same time, for us, we want to push the envelope for the music quality and we want to push the envelope for really uh, provocative and, and thoughtful music experiences and documentaries that, uh, like you said, are very immersive and mm. pull you in and make you not only want to watch and enjoy watching, but maybe get up and dance or, yeah. or even learn something through one of the documentaries, you know. Um, and that, that's the important part. You know, we want to have a real quality channel that people want to watch all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good stuff. That That is good stuff. Can anyone, um, what are the qualifications for a musician or an artist to have their content on your, on the Reverie channel? Is there um, requirements that they got to pass or something? How do they get on if possible? Well, um, you know, there aren't really that many requirements other than the quality of the music. That's going to be the biggest requirement. Okay. Uh, of course, we do want it, of course, to be some type of visual experience. Mm. So there's not much we can do if someone were to send us a song that's just an audio song. You know, there is perhaps some type of music bed that goes with some other video that perhaps it could be a part of. But, you know, over and above that, that would be fairly tricky. But if they do have a really good music experience or documentary or some tour uh, footage that they want to get exposure for and that they want to express and have people support, you know, that that's wonderful. And that's mm -hmm. what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Do we find that uh, since everything is so digital and streaming and it's audio that are people still doing videos to accommodate the music? Are oh, you, absolutely. They are. He said, absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, there's so many good, uh, streaming vehicles for people nowadays for them and their videos. Uh, it's a helpful time for content creators to really, uh, you know, to really get really far as far as uh, as far as that is concerned. Okay. Uh, we have things like um, able to use their their videos for commercials for YouTube and, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now on the channel, we talked about you got concerts. Um, documentaries, mm -hmm. your interviews going to be there too? Yeah, we have concerts, we have interviews and uh, documentary uh, interview style <laughs> <laughs> documentaries. But, you know, one thing that we're really proud of is a lot of the backstage footage and a lot of the tour vignettes, right. you know. Mm -hmm. Artists as you're on tour and as they're interacting with each other and, you know, kind of getting their whole kind of musical and performance of going and getting ready to get on stage yeah. you know that's something that we, we really love featuring uh, you know some of those performances like i said are not necessarily concerts we have the huge concerts like the atlanta jazz festival with mm -hmm. uh with ronda mm -hmm. and everybody but we also have those really intimate uh personal performances by artists that are you know sometimes doing it in really intimate venues right or just doing it as a solo or doing it from their very own couch mm -hmm. or so, very own home anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, since you're, you're, you're new, uh, your channel is almost a year old. How are mm -hmm. you getting your word out about your awesome channel? How can, how are people finding it? Yeah. Most of that is naturally through social media and commercials mm -hmm. that, uh, that air on YouTube and the Roku channels and, and things like that. Got you. Got One of the you. Things we try to do also, since it is a music oriented channel, is make sure that we try to air a lot of our commercials and air a lot of our social media through music, social media groups, and social media movements. Are there are there artists on the that you have in mind that you would like to see on your channel? Is there anybody, uh, an artist or an entertainer or a group that you would love to air their work on your channel or play it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there, there's quite a few. Um, 
you know, Tony, Tony, Tony is uh, one of the artists that definitely come to mind. And, mm-hmm. uh, That's that Bay Area, isn't it? Isn't that Oakland? Yeah. <laughs> Oakland. That's the town for sure. And, you know, I, a lot of greats came out of Oakland. <laughs> yeah, no, I work a lot with Oakland, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, sister companies is the Oakland Carnival, and I work with them every year. Uh, first uh, on the first Saturday in June, but uh, and and you know through a lot of my connections through Oakland, you know I do know and have connected with Dwayne Wiggins, so mm-hmm. hopefully we'll be able to make that happen sooner than later. Awesome, awesome, and he just oh, another, also, you know, sorry to cut you off, but no, you no. know, I would really, really love to have some uh, some type of content from Prince. You know, he was always one of my yes. favorite artists. So. Uh, and of course, the next thing is, uh, you know, including some of the live performances that people can consume, uh, you know, right there uh, on a pay-per-view basis from people like India Ari or, yeah. or, uh, or Erica, you know, some yeah. of the people that we've worked with before. Sure. Yeah, yeah. You, you say Prince. Is it Prince? Is it, would you like Marvin? Would you like Michael? Or is it, you know, is it any of those people? Is it, is it, is it Aretha? Tell me a little bit more about how you feel you're going to start carving or wanting the type of musicians on your channel. Absolutely. Well, you know, we are really fortunate to have a really great concert uh, uh, by Marvin Gaye on the channel. And, you know, we'd love to add to that something from yeah. Michael Jackson and Prince and, yeah. oh, and Tina Turner and all the greats. But we also want to move forward with a lot of the younger artists as well, right. you know, and uh, certainly a lot of the young soul artists like her. Yes. And, uh, and Sir. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and PJ, the Chicago kid, and yeah. all of the really great, and Let Us See, all of the really great uh, yeah. talent in that regard. You know, we do actually have uh, a song from Let Us See Live that's on there. Mm-hmm. She's amazing. She's amazing. Yeah. It, it's it. You have an opportunity, Will, to really fill a void, right? To allow people to hear this music and see them in action. Because oftentimes we can't get to it, uh, you know, to see a concert. We want to, but can't. And so by you bringing that element, that'd be great. Um, you know, Tony, Tony, Tony just had a successful tour uh, in 23, that reunion tour, like, sold out in every city. Um, so it was great. And everybody couldn't go. But to see right. them, you know, 20 years, 20, 30 years after they did Hey Little Walter, <laughs> their very first yeah. song, um, to see how mature they are as musicians um, is, is amazing. So, yeah, I appreciate that. You know, anything, yeah, that was then. And if you giving us things that are happening now, that will be great. Um, for your viewership, absolutely, absolutely. Where you see, where you see your channel in the next? Uh, I'm going to say in the next year or two, because things are changing. Um, yeah, larger yeah. markets, international, like you. How are? You, what do you want for your channel? Well, well, uh, in the next year, we're certainly going to look to embark on the content of Africa for uh, nice. from the adoption standpoint. Nice. Uh, you know, they are huge adopters when it comes to not only visual music experiences, but American visual music experiences. Mm-hmm. That's going to go over well, not only there, but in the Orient as well, and in Europe as well. Mm-hmm. So you know, we want to increase that adoption and get global adoption uh, first and foremost. But the most important thing, of course, for us next is that concert, that ultimate live concert level that people yeah. will experience right yeah. there and uh, and have that be the unique home for that type of experience. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. Well, where can the people find the channel? What do we do? Do we go to the store? We go to our app store. We download it. What's going on? How do we get to it? Well, you know, we certainly did develop it for Android and for iPhone Mm -hmm. apps. You can go to the App Store, the Google Play Store, and and certainly uh, no matter which device you're using, uh, it works great on all of them. But, you know, for us, it's best seen, you know, with the biggest screen as possible and, you know, your TV or, or, you know, um, flat screen Mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever TV you have mounted Mm -hmm. through uh, through (laughs) Amazon Fire. Uh, TV devices or Apple TV devices and Roku devices as mm-hmm, well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if they have Roku, they can get it. They can just d- download your app through their yeah. Roku channels. 
And then there it is. Voila. So it's, it's free. That's the, that's where I'm getting to. There's no cause for the people to see this beautiful channel. Uh, there is no cost. Uh, it is actually uh, all you have to do is sign up for it and then give your email address, and then uh, and then you have to consume the content right there off of uh, Roku, uh, right on your Roku TV, off of their apps or Amazon Fire Stick and Amazon Fire TVs, and also Apple TV devices. Yeah. As well. Yes, yes. And the quality on the channel has been pretty good. So hats off to you on that. Awesome. 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 How can people keep up with the channel and you? Where can people best find this information? Where can they go? Well, they can go straight to the reveriechannel.net. Uh, yeah, reveriechannel.net. And that way, you know, not only can you also consume some of the content there as well, if you're uh, at work and on your computer, yeah, that that's a great place to kind of yeah. keep up with the new information and all the new happenings. Yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome and stuff. To that, uh, you know, once you sign up, uh, you generally should get a newsletter as well. And that will give you, you know, much like Netflix does, it'll give you kind of a glimpse of everything that's happening that month, everything that's happening with the channel and all the new content. Mm-hmm. Can, can people buy uh, merchandise? You're wearing a nice hoodie. You got T-shirts. What you got? What's going on? <laughs> Yeah, actually, merchandise will be coming down the pike soon, so we will have these uh, these hoodies and T-shirts. This particular hoodie has uh, the embroidered logo, so yeah, you know, wrong side. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's reversed. I mean, look at this. <laughs> That's the that's the one I'm the most proud of, and uh, you know I'm, I'm hoping to see that uh, you know on people's bodies as soon as possible. Yes, but, and, you know, and and we really do thank you for having us, and we really. Thank everyone for the support, uh, not only the artists and creators, but everyone who's been supportive and, uh, and you know, hopefully they will support us with the merchandise as well. Absolutely. I see a mug in my future, a mug or a T-shirt or something, because uh, it's looking we'll really sure smashing on you. <laughs> yeah, we we'll to make sure we get you taken care of. <laughs> It's looking really good on you, Will Griggs. Thank you so much for your time, man. This is awesome. And we wish you much continued success in everything you do, especially with the channel. I'm watching it. I, had, I tell you, I had to stop. I started, so, you know, and I was like, I got to get, I got to go to work. I got stuff to do. I can't be watching it. Um, I fell in love with the Blackout documentary. Great job in in putting that on there. And there's some, some, some other things that I definitely want to see. So really great channel. It's got my interest for sure. And I just wish you nothing but continued success with it. Well, thank you so much once again for having us and yeah. uh, some really, really great things that we have coming up this month uh, on the channel that, that uh, we'll be debuting. Yeah, absolutely. And can you give us a little tea? Can you spill any of them now? Or we just have to fasten our seatbelt and wait till we get the, the um, email and the blogs? Well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's going to be uh, some really, really good live concert footage that will be taking place uh, that's more carnival oriented. Ooh. So I'm going to bring, uh, you know, an island element to it as well. Yes, yes, because island, we love to party. We love to party. All right. So we'll tell the people where they can find the channel again. What are their options? How can they get to it? Absolutely. Download it right there on your Apple uh, Apple uh, App Store or on the Play Store if you actually have an a Android device. Mm -hmm. uh, but like I said, it's best seen on TV for Roku devices, for Amazon Fire sticks and Amazon Fire TVs and also for Apple Apple TV as well. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Will Griggs, for your time. That's my time, ladies and gentlemen. You know me, Real Chicks Rock. I am everywhere. I am on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. Now it's called X. I'm on Facebook. Go check out our website, realchicksrock.com. Subscribe so you don't miss out what we got to say. Because we blog too. We send out little newsletters and things like that. Subscribe to the new t YouTube channel. Yes, Real Chicks Rock. Hit the little notification bell. Sign up. So every time we upload something, you are one of the first to know that it's happening. So listen, this is my time, but you know my favorite, Frankie Crocker, WBLS 107.5 in New York City. He would end his show with this. May you live to be 100 and I live to be 100 minus a day. So I never knew that beautiful people like you had passed away. Until next time, take care, be well, and continue to rock on. Thank you for checking out Real Chicks Rock Presents Real Discussions. 
be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our next show.